Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever Country Music Armadillo interview. Uh, I'm sitting here with a very special guest. Uh, I'm joined tonight by Mikey Rebel, a young man out of Pennsylvania who is uh, trying to make his way in the hellbilly subgenre of country music. Mikey, thanks for joining me here tonight. Oh, you're welcome, man. We uh, So just start off by telling us kind of who Mikey Rebel is and, and what he stands for. Well, man, my name is Mikey Rebel. Uh, you know, uh, I stand for a lot of things. I mean, growing up, I've I've all I've been a musician since I was like two years old. I've played drums until I was like probably about twelve years old, thirteen years old, and when uh, right around that age, I got a guitar from a friend, and after that. Um, he wanted he wanted it back, so after my birthday, we went and I got myself a little uh, Stratocaster, and then just started from there. And uh, but along the way, you know, my family they've always been, you know, up in the mountains, up in NEPA, and they've always lived up on the we it's up in Larksville Mountain, and then they uh, then I lived in a cabin down in a place called Salem, and uh, but then. Uh, I came back into town around nine years old, and I've always wanted to skateboard, and I got affiliated with the Skater Punks, and they, um, you know, they uh, they pretty much brought me into the whole thing with the Addicts, Black Flag, Misfits, the Virus, Casualties, the Ramones, Dead Kennedys, and so on and so forth. And then there was the hardcore kids who helped, who like uh, influenced me with like. Strength for a Reason, Wisdom in Chains, Trapped Under Ice, Not Till Death, and so on and so forth in that genre. And then there was the Metal Kids, and but like I've always loved country music because I grew up around my grandparents, you know, and uh, it's just I just didn't know my place. So like right around the time when I was you know seventeen, eighteen, you know, I figured you know. I don't know what to do. So then I kind of got affiliated with the whole Hank 3 thing and I you know I I started listening to his music when I was about 17, 18 years old. And I figured, wow, like this guy he plays country music, punk music, and metal music and then he mixes it all together and I'm like, wow, like this is like this is really awesome because it's okay to play all these different styles of music. So like that's where it all started, you know. And then I figured, since he could do it, why can't someone else do it? You know, just kind of keep the fire burning with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a there's a huge following for for his style of music. He's he's created his own subgenre of country music. I, I like to call it hellbilly, um, ripping that term right off from him. Um, you know, there's. That's that's one of the most misunderstood genres in country music because it influences and, and infuses so much metal and rock and you know the the traditional country fans they have a hard time truly understanding that you know it's it's a it's a package deal it's kind of like a, a modern day variety show but you know that's that's definitely um, a very viable form of, of country music so you, you talked about some of your country influences. Um, who who more more than Hank was your country influences? Well, Hank three was one like like I said when I was about seventeen. Um, with my grandparents, you know they they really uh you know they they showed me like Hank Senior. They showed me Hank Snow, Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, uh, Kitty Wells, Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty. And just so on and so forth, like in that whole, you know, country music library. Yeah, and I call that the, the the golden era. Oh, most definitely, man. I mean, I just you know, being around that country music, and I mean, I listen to some Alan Jackson, his early stuff, but like you know, it just really like gets under my skin when people of today call, you know, like Garth Brooks or Toby Keith real country music because you know it's just to me it's all watered down and everyone has a song written for them instead of you know oh yeah the 
the Nashville machine has been in charge for the last 30 years. You know, when Waylon Jennings finally got <laughs> run out of Nashville, that was the that was the happiest day of Nashville's life. Um, so with your music, what is it exactly that you're wanting fans to take away from your music? You know, like, I want, like, for the misunderstood kids that, like, really don't know their place because they love all these, you know, all these genres of music because, you know, everyone in high school has their clique. There's the punk kids, there's the metal kids, there's the emo kids, so on and so forth of today. And it, I just want, you know, kids who listen to my music, like if they're growing up and, you know, they're like, oh, wow, like it's okay to be just that different person to love country music and punk and metal music. It's okay to dress different and express how you feel, you know, and also anyone who is going through a hard time, you know, with in life with either a heartbreak or you know, financial or whatever, and they listen to one of my songs when it comes down to, like, one of the, you know, lonesome or hard time songs, as I would call it, you know, they could say, you know what, I know that I'm not going through it alone. Or when they listen to, like, the fast hell-raising music that I write, it's about, like, you know, living life, as I would say, living life in overdrive and just having a damn good time because you only have one life, live it how you want to, you know? Have a damn good time doing it. Uh, absolutely. That's that's a great answer. I, I really like what you had to say there. Um, so I, I understand that in your genre of music, you know, Hank was really the kind of the pioneer, and there's been a lot of people that have been slow to come on to it and join that genre, and the fact that you have has earned you some haters and some doubters. Most definitely. Um, when it comes down to the whole haters, you know, I get a lot of hate because I have the pinned hat or I have a vest or, you know, or I have a pants that are full of patches and, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just carrying on what I, what I know, you know, growing up with the skater punks, they all had, you know, studded leather jackets and ripped up, uh, denim vests with all their favorite bands patches and stuff on it. And I mean, uh, for the pinned hat, uh, since I hung out with the Whites of West Virginia, you know, uh, they um, they told me, you know, this is a way that we down here um, in Boone County decided to rep ourselves. It's called the Boone County Curve, and you know, Hank Three kind of made it his trademark somewhat, and uh, that's what everyone knows him by. But so to, so I'm so what I was guessing. Well, then you know if they, since they're my friends and we're really close, and I mean I'm not from Boone County, but I like to you know support and rep them. Why they told me, you know you could do it. So I'm like okay, then I'll do it. So I, that's why I had the whole pinned hat thing. It's not a, it's not you know me trying to copy Hank or anything else like that because you know I'm just paying respects to those who I love. Absolutely, and you know, it's it's one of those things that in our day and age, you know, music is so diverse anymore that it's really hard to be original. I mean, you think about the last, just say, say 20 years of music alone, you know, how many completely original artists have come along and done something that no one has ever heard before. It's just, that's almost impossible in this day and age. So you're just, you're just following up in that genre, and I mean... That's that's something that you know not a lot of artists have done so far, and, and obviously you know there's going to be doubters. But you know, I mean, you seem like a really good guy. You seem to have a, a real passion for your music and for what you're doing, and you know, I, I think over time that is something that will dissipate for you. Um, have you written any songs? Yeah, um, I'm currently working on a on a country album that I'm going to be calling Life of Sin. Um, it's going to have 14, 15 tracks on it, um, a mixture of the hell raising fast stuff, and it's going to have some of the slow stuff about, you know, heartbreak and, you know, and then just, you know, me happy medium songs about just having a damn good time or just what I do in my life and stuff. And, um, and then there's going to be, I'm working on a second part of the CD where... Um, it's going to be more of a, on the line of a surprise, uh, but right now, I don't have a band, 
I'm just doing everything by myself. I'm booking shows by myself, writing by, I mean, obviously I'm writing by myself because, you know, it's like my thing, but I mean, I'm just doing everything DIY and I'm not trying to sell my soul to mass corporate bullshit and just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to sell myself out. I'm just trying to do everything that I want to do because it's what I like to do. You know, I just, and plus, not only that, but um, a lot of the DIY artists, um, you get more of a loyal following. You get more of a, you know, loyal fan base to where, you know, it's not another bandwagon trend hopping thing to where Nashville's pushing out or, you know, where I don't have another guy, I don't have a guy behind a desk telling me, you can write. You have to write this like this, and play here, here, and here, and you know you have to dress like this, and all you are is just a just a face, and we're writing your songs for you. Like I, I don't roll like that, you know. I just I do things my way, and it's either my way or the highway. That's how it rolls because, you know, it's my music. I'm not gonna have someone else tell me how to do my thing, you know. Uh, freedom in artistry. That's something that you know. Um, really is kind of a key in, in country music. I mean, you look at a guy like, like Waylon Jennings, who, you know, he struggled in Nashville for 10 years, you know, trying to play the Nashville system and, and play their game. And he finally gets his creative freedom, and suddenly he's, his career just shoots off, and now he's making platinum albums and solo platinum albums, shit that no one had ever done before in Nashville. And, I mean, you look at, even today, you know, that kind of accomplishment, the freedom that he was given as an artist has been lost, especially in country music, but it's been lost across all genres of music. And that's something that, you know, is one of my biggest pet peeves about country music. I want to see the art, the, I want to see the art be in charge of itself. I want to see the artists make the art and let the art sell itself. I, I don't want you know, all the, all the interference and all the record or the image groups and image consultants and all that stuff, the marketing department, all that stuff. Um, you, you talked about your record. Uh, have you had any discussions with any like labels about putting that out or producing it, anything like that? Not necessarily, man. I'm still working on it. Um, as for the first part of the CD, it's, it's almost done, um, acoustically, but, uh, like I said, I'm still struggling to find, some people to roll along for the ride with it and you know I mean I'm in PA right now and eventually hoping for me by August I'm going to be heading down to Nashville and uh, down by Alabama and also if I can also in Texas to find anyone who wants to come for the ride with me and uh, just do this show I want to do because it's gonna be one hell of a ride so out there in Pennsylvania, it, it's it's kind of hard to find people who, uh, you know, are are into the scene. You're you're saying? Oh yeah, most definitely. Like you, I found I've probably out of the, you know, out of the whole time that I've been doing what I want to do with it, you know, it's just um, the I I've come in contact with two steel players, and the two steel guitars that I came across with, one guy was like seventy some years old and. He didn't really want to do anything, and then I came across recently with this younger guy, and he uh, he wanted to play more stuff that was more melodic and more '90s slash 2000s and up. And I was like, you know, it's just he just didn't like what I wanted to do with it. So it's really hard to find a steel player. It's fine. You you can't really find an upright bass player or a banjo player or a fiddle player. And if you come across any of them players. They're either taken by another band or they don't want anything to do with it, you know. Um, but drums, I mean, you can find them pretty much anywhere up here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you head down to Nashville, Texas, you know, you're, you're fishing in a bigger pond down there. So that definitely, definitely should make it easier for you to get the band rolling. Um, what about your shows and, and your touring? How many shows are you playing in, in, in a given month? Right now, um, I I try to play at least four, maybe five shows a month as of what, what I'm doing right now. Um, but I plan on doing this mass tour for the first tour. 
um, once I get the band rolling and stuff like that. Um, and with the shows, uh, with the shows, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a country set with like my style of country, and then for anyone out there that's listening to this, um, I want to do a like a um, Hank Three's Ass Jack kind of set mixed with the goddamn Gallows kind of sound, mixed with those poor bastards kind of sound, and then like maybe have a little bit of like spaghetti western kind of sound, cool stuff like in there, and just make it into one big mumbo jumbo thing with it. And then I want to do like a punk rock set to pay my respects to those guys um, with either acoustic or electric guitar with on those songs for that. And then I want to do for the metal stuff that influenced me. Um, I want to just bring things really heavy for the influences for the metal styles that influenced me, like Sabbath, Sleep, um, Electric Wizard, um, even some. You know, I'll even throw in some speed stuff in there, like um, you know, mix it up with uh, stuff like Cannibal Corpse and stuff like that. It's just gonna be one big. Um, one big multi-genre show. I mean, Hank 3 did it, and that's another reason why I want to do it, is because to pay my respects to him and help him keep the fire rolling with the, to show everyone that it's okay to play multi-genres in a show if you really want to do it, and then that way you get more of a diverse crowd. You get, like, how Hank 3 said, you get the kids, the grandmas, the bikers, the punks, the metal kids, and just so many, you just get more of a diverse crowd, and everyone loves you, because everyone will be happy from what they want to hear and you know since growing up like I said it was hard for me to find my place you know I since he inspired me with a lot of things I was like you know what to pay my respects to him I'm gonna do it because I'm I want to play all these different types of genres in one show and then people just be like wow that's awesome you know and then but for that mass tour that I was talking about what I want to do is uh I've been since I started. I've had a lot of people help me out. Shout out to Country Metal Minds on Facebook. Um, uh, shout out to um, Country Armadillo for helping me out for this, and uh, for everyone that supported me that I talk to on a day to day regular basis. I'm gonna try to get a tour that goes everywhere that everywhere to all the people who have supported me. So that way, you know, they can finally see me and get the final, you know, the pro final copy of the music and be like, you know, I supported this guy and he's coming to see me just because I supported him because it's just like my way of giving back to the fans, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's really great. And, you know, uh, talking about, you know, the diversity of the set you plan to play, um, I really think that as this hellbilly genre expands, and I really think it will expand over the next, you know, uh, even the next five years, I think that's something that we're going to see more of. Um, that's going to become kind of the calling card of the hellbilly genre to play, you know, metal and, and, and punk rock and mix it in with the country stuff. And that's just, I mean, there's a very big, wide audience who really likes that sort of thing. So I, I definitely think that that's, there's going to be a, a real call for that uh, as time goes on and that music progresses. Um, so let's let's talk now. You know, you've mentioned some some influences and some groups that you know you wanna you wanna play and or that you wanna play. Uh, you know, you're sitting at home at 9:30 and uh, on the couch and you say, uh, you know, man, I'd I'd like some beef jerky and. You, you jump in the car to go to the gas station to get some beef jerky. Who's on your radio? Are you listening to, to the FM radio? Or are you listening to satellite radio, a CD? What are you listening to? Uh, well, it all depends on the day, I guess. I mean, I really don't, I don't listen to the radio because it's all one big money scheme and it's all corporate. And it all, to me, it all sounds the same. But, um, you know, I usually carry my iPod with me. And, like, if I'm... You know, if I had, like, a mellow day or whatever, or, like, you know, if it's raining or some sh something, or, you know, if, if I'm in the mood, I'll throw on some of the country stuff, you know, like, all the country influences I've named, or if I'm, like, feeling, like, um, or if I want to just go for a nice drive out, and I just want to, like, jam out to some, like, 
you know, the bluegrass, uh, like I'll, in the woods, I'll go to like listen to some bluegrass stuff or I'll listen to like some Hank 3 or those poor bastards or the goddamn gallows or, um, you know, a lot of that, that kind of stuff. Or I'll listen to, um, or if I'm just like in the mood, it all depends on the mood. Like I'll listen to some Sabbath, I'll listen to some Cannibal Corpse, I'll listen to some Zeppelin, some Pink Floyd, I'll listen to um, The Addicts, Black Flag, Minor Threat, um, The Misfits, uh, The Virus. You know, I just it just comes down to the mood, I guess. You know. I really like the diversity. That's I, I'm the same way. I listen to a lot of a lot of country and a lot of rock. Um, you know, is there any kind of message that you want? You know, if if you had to deliver one short message to the listeners, what would that be? Stick to what you know. Don't let anyone put you down, and just do what you love. If it makes you feel good, then do it. If someone's gonna put you down for it, that's their problem. You know, a lot of my a lot of my friends. Uh, the ones who support me, um, from the haters that hate on me, they say, you know what, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one and they all suck <laughs> and they all smell. So, I mean, <laughs> like, just do what you love and, you know, just stay true to yourself. And, you know, if you're a musician, play what you want to play, you know, just, and in my opinion, just go against the grain. That's all I have to pretty much say because I don't like to be told what to do on and how I should play my music or how I should dress because, you know, everything that I wear and everything that I play, it all has a meaning and there's a story behind everything. You know, like the one patch that I have on my vest, I have, I got from my first Hank 3 show and he signed my bandana and now I have my bandana tattooed up on my arm because... That was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever experienced in my life, and I don't want to ever forget it. And, you know, where I get a lot of hate for, I have a pot leaf on my vest, and just like Hank does, or because I have a, I have a motorhead patch on my vest. You know, I mean, I personally, I mean, I'm not going to say, what I do with my personal things with that, but I mean, you know, I support, I gladly support, I can honestly say I'm a gladly, I'm a big supporter on medical marijuana for um, medical purposes, and so for that, I'm going to, I put it on my vest to support, and I just had no other place to put it, so that's where it ended up, and that's where I get the whole, oh, you're a Hank 3 copycat for all this other shit, and Personally, if you know who I am and you get to know me, you'll learn that I'm not, you know, everyone has an influence with everything. Um, and when it comes down to style, um, one more thing before, you know, if we're going to hop off here, if people are going to talk about hating on somebody for a style, does that mean that, you know, the virus is a copycat of the casualties or... Or any of the other punk genres with it, with their mohawks and liberty spikes and spiked up vests. and You know what I mean? To me, it's just, you know, it's all a thing of personal preference with, you know, with your style. And, you know, to me, it's everyone influences everything. There's an influence with everything. And personally, you know, I'm going to follow my influences. And I'm and I and everything on my vest at all is I pretty much love all the bands on my vest and I support every single one of them. Well, that's a great answer, Mikey. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and end this. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to to talk with us here tonight. Uh, oh, you're welcome, man. We're we're very excited to to hear what you're able to put together. Um, hopefully, we'll be doing this again down the road sometime soon. Talking about uh, talking about your new record release, man. Uh, most definitely, and if I can get out to Indiana sometime this year, uh, I'll definitely come and stop by and see y'all. Oh, absolutely, man. Hey, thank you, Mikey. You're welcome, brother. Thrown out your sand Having my 
is straight and clear. We'll round up some friends for tonight and then we'll head down by the green. Till the break of dawn or ink until we're blind. Dancing all around, raise a hell you see. Hello.